Dude, it is bizarre. <laughs> So guys, we're all collected here, me the Sonic Show, Grant Dumsville, and LS Mark to discuss Five Nights at Freddy's. Hit film, what do we think? Grant, were you excited for this movie? You had a very strong reaction to it. Were you oh, looking yeah, forward to it? Oh yeah, deeply, I was deeply, deeply excited for the FNAF movie. I was the biggest FNAF follower. Uh, just kidding. Um, I, when FNAF came out, I was kind of like a little, like, I never truly got into FNAF like other people did. I respected it from a distance. You know, with the MatPat game theory videos, like I've watched like, I think like three to five of them, but I, I fell out of it because it was like FNAF came out right when I was like getting into high school. I didn't quite view view it as like, I remember you describe it in a video, Mark, as like pe kids got into FNAF because kids wanted something that's more adult to yeah. enjoy. Yeah. And so I feel like that's a big reason why FNAF was popular in the first place. And I didn't really have that. So That's going into fair. so going into FNAF, I was like acutely aware of like the lore, um, like I was aware of like Purple Guy, and I was aware of the kid crying and whatnot. But I, I viewed FNAF mostly as a movie with some awareness of the FNAF lore, and I came That's out, fair. yeah, I I came out very heavily disliking the movie and being kind of dumbfounded by the whole thing. <laughs> Um, See, I was like, I was the kind of that, but also I ha also had the fan aspect where I was really into it whenever it first came out and I was a kid. Then I kind of dropped off for a while. Then when I started making YouTube videos about it, I was like, okay, I got to catch up with everything. And I spent so long like having to research and make sure everything I'm saying is accurate that I just kind of like became a fan of it again. And I was like, damn, this is actually kind of cool. So going into eh. this movie, I kind of had the mindset of like, okay, the the FNAF side of me is probably going to really like this, but the the move the side of me that like cares about movies and like storytelling will probably eh. really fucking hate it. And it was exactly what I anticipated. How about you, Jaden? I've never liked FNAF to be honest. Like I played the first game, I thought it was okay. It's basically like a flash game, but like glorified. All of my friends were super into the lore like extremely into it it like turned me off especially the game theory stuff so i was never really into it so i went to this movie having terrible expectations everyone was telling me about how bad it was matt has no cuts um literally messaged me and told me it was like the worst movie ever so i thought go that this far. was gonna be awful and it was i thought it was pretty good there's a couple parts that like actually triggered me that i want to talk about with you guys <laughs> yeah. but other than that yes. i think it was pretty it was a pretty good movie. Yeah, that's that's the thing. My my most or are, are, are like, it's hard for me to really hate it because it is just like a fine adaptation of the first Five Nights at Freddy's game. But for me, it's like, damn, I've had eight years of this movie being in development to think of how cool it could be. I'd like to think of all the cool ways that could have done this. So I could see someone who is just going in with no real expectations to be like, yeah, that was that was a solid movie. You know, I I, I had fun with it, but um. For me yes. as a fan, it's like, damn, I wanted it to be cool or I wanted it to take itself seriously, that, even that though is, I knew that would never happen. That is true, too, because this movie spent like eight years in development as well. So you kind of have like a certain level of a hype built up like, oh, yeah. wow, eight years. That means like they really and, and the, the eight year delay, it's not like Uncharted, where it's like that movie was in development for like, what, 12 years. And mm. the reason it was was because Sony Pictures is just incompetent. Um, but but the reason like FNAF was in development for a long time was because, like, Scott Cawthon was really putting a stranglehold in a lot of stuff, right? Like he was writing the yeah, script and whatnot. How to, he didn't know how to translate it, and he had all these script writers come in and write them scripts, and they would just take, like, the concept of Freddy's and just turn it into a different movie. I think one of the pitches, or one of the scripts was like, oh, a yeah. kid goes into a pawn shop and finds an old Freddy animatronic and takes it home, and, like, oh, then it starts, like, killing everyone. It's like, that's not Five Nights at Freddy's, though. So I think this is the best-case scenario we could have gotten from a Five Nights at Freddy's movie. And, and I can that's, see why it took so long. That's why I think, like, my expectations might have been a little bit higher. Because, like, I feel like when you have a movie in development for eight years for that reason, and you have the cre the reason for it being the creator is not happy with it, that kind of makes you go, okay, they're really trying to make a good movie that adapts the game. So I think my expectations might have been also high for that reason. But not like I super will high. say the basic story of the game, I feel like was translated pretty well. The only thing that yeah. I think yeah. we might all agree is kind of bad was, 
and I don't want to get into it immediately. I'll get into it later. But the ending, and th that was a little bad and a little corny. Yeah. But other than that, I actually think they did a pretty good job translating the story and the characters. And I actually liked when the animatronics, like, liked Abby. And they were, like, you got to I see that them part was not kinda, being distracted. I thought, that, I thought that was pretty cool. Like... <laughs> They wouldn't stop tickling me. I thought that part was kind of corny. I'm like, what the fuck is this? That kind of removes the intimidation from all of them. I I thought it was corny, but I could see the thought process behind it. But it's one of those things where it wouldn't have bothered me so much if, like Jaden said, the ending like carried it, you know? But it just kind of feels like the police officer Vanessa comes in and is like, okay, here's the five minute rundown of everything going on. I'm just going to tell you all the all the twists and turns that's going to happen. And then that's, William Afton comes in and dies. And it's like, what? That, that's like, the so biggest lame. issue. A lot of the characters in dialogue, is they're just exposition dumps. That's, that's mm. my big thing. Like the film is so exposition heavy. The play where it's boring. It's not even really a horror movie. It's... A, a large amount of the movie is like Vanessa coming in uh, and just explaining like the lore to you. And it's like, what, why is this character like going to do anything aside from explain the lore? Where does she even come from? Add to that the thing with those kids going missing. What did you just say? And I think up, Vanessa's the worst aspect. Yeah. Yeah. No, dude. She's like, the best. It's I'm a little biased, fuck her, right? Yeah, it's just because she's really cute. <laughs> yeah. But it's not because uh, I want to fuck her. I just, I think she's a nice character to have around. That's you fair. Know? But to me, it's like, it's like, damn, it would have been way cooler if he's kind of like alone in this grungy pizzeria and he's kind of, there's, uh, there's all these killer things and not this police officer. Th who's that's like, what I expected hey, here's a taser. from the movie. Yeah, that's what I yeah, expected me, from yeah, the movie. Too. I expected yeah. like the, the main character is like just going to the pizzeria and getting haunted gradually throughout the movie and just tortured by it. But like the thing is like every character and every like all the uh, like adaptations of the analog horror like Game Boy like arcade segments from like the games, they're they're here, but they're done more as like a way to explain the lore to like a dad or something to tell him what's going on, because you can't like you can't apparently be subtle in a horror movie. So a large majority of the movie is not on the horror, but rather on like characters reciting a MatPat video to you. Yeah. It's like there's no real mystery when you have scenes of characters sitting around a, at a coffee table and talking about how they're going to invade something. You know what I mean? Like, there's no real horror in Vanessa just explaining to you her dad was the killer, is going to be the killer the whole time, and all the kids are like, are like FNAF Freddy. Guess you figured it out. Ghost children possessing giant robots. Thanks for the heads up. And even like the, the weird dream sequences are so on the nose. Cause you immediately when I saw the first dream sequence and I a reminder, I don't know too, I'm not nearly into FNAF lore as other people. I'm acutely aware of, of it visually, but not of the context. So mm. I know where like the, the kid eye crying comes from, but I didn't know those were the, the Freddy Fazbear pizzeria animatronics. So, but they weren't in the games. They weren't, I did not know. That's, I guess that was also a thing. Like they weren't in the games. But yeah. um, but I I watched the movie and immediately I immediately it was so predictable. I saw all five kids standing there in this Silent Hill two ass dream sequence, and immediately I went, okay, yeah, five animatronics, five kids, yeah. <laughs> okay, Those we get it. Kids. You're not a child. <laughs> we get it. <laughs> Those are Who are you? That car. Did you see that car? Yeah. I just wish the, the movie had more of a mystery setup where it's like, yeah, maybe the dreams are mm -hmm. more vague at first about what's going on. Or mm -hmm. um, maybe we're actually seeing Mike, tr like, because because he's just kind of told that the animatronics are haunted by Vanessa. She just comes in and is like, oh, yeah, this is what's going on. He's like, oh, OK. And even his little sister, Abby, just kind of like already knew. She's like, oh, yeah, they're ghosts. I know that. Like, I don't care. Yeah. And it's just like, why don't we have scenes like of him trying to figure out what's going on or like researching the old pizzeria and finding out that like, oh, five kids went missing on the newspaper from the time. What the fuck? And that's why it eh. shut down. Like, there's nothing eh. like that. It's just kind of you so self-contained. I will also say you guys are taking like a little bit too much credit as people who know the lore because you're like, it's so obvious. I'll be honest. I didn't know the five kids thing immediately. I was like later. I was like, oh, one has a claw, the hat. I was like, I get it. That's I fair. Get it. That's fair. But at first, I, I didn't knew, get that I knew immediately. I knew immediately. And I'm not even that big on the FNAF lore. I don't know. Maybe that's it's just my me. thing where I, I can accept it because I'm such a fan. I'm just like, oh, it could have been cooler, you know? Oh, fuck, you know? So I can see how... This it was is. the best case scenario for a general audience to get into a FNAF movie. Um, I can accept that. 
I guess so, overall, I, I like the movie. I want to talk about a couple parts I thought were like really bad, and I think Grant will agree with me on. Hell yeah. There's there's the worst part of me, <laughs> and this was like the one part where I was like, okay, because I wasn't even enjoying the movie the whole time. I thought it was pretty good. I was like, okay, it's a little corny moments, but it's all right. But when Freddy visited the house <laughs> to visit Abby, and then they, yeah. it's like the Freddy in real yeah. life moment he gets in the taxi. What the? Oh my goodness. And it's also like, how it's did he even get scene. there? And why yeah. is does this one look destroyed? No, nothing's explained. That just happens. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and obviously, like, fans of the series will look at that and be like, well, that's Golden Freddy. He was destroyed. He was in the back the whole time. He's not one of the mean animatronics. And it's like, or, or he's like one of the old, old ones who was just like in the back. And it's like, but as a movie for general audiences, you're making such an effort to like kind of build this from the ground up that not explaining stuff like that is kind of weird and makes you scratch your head and wonder why, what's going on. For a is, but also it had the the funny trailer moment where <laughs> he gets in the the taxi and the the guy looks over and it weighs Corey down. He's Kenshin like, uh oh, looks up, look behind uh -oh him. there's a Freddy in my taxi. And yeah, and then he looks at his old bottle of uh, vodka beside him and he pours it out and he goes, "Oh, no more of that." It's kind of so so wacky. Mm. I just feel like I feel like the film takes itself way too seriously like a majority of the time. Because a lot of the characters feel extremely sterile and kind of very dramatic, you know? Mm. And and it's like, I, I would have really I would have really liked it if the film kind of played into the absurdity of, like, the fact that it is a FNAF movie, you know? I will like, say I kind of like, like that. Like, I disagree. Like, because you also said, like, it didn't take itself seriously enough. Like, when... I think it kind of increased tensions. Like, when Abby it befriends the animatronics and they're all like, I don't know. It creates this new tension of like they're going to turn at any second and kill her and try to take her and they're just like sitting there defenseless like uh, watching. I don't them. know. To me, to me, it felt so totally inconsistent, especially with the Abby scene, because a a large the movie up to that point is very kind of it's very dramatic, very kind of like sad in a way, because the the main guy is like down on his luck. He has to take care of like Abby. He's he's like struggling for a job. He's beating people up in random places. A lot I mean, of the characters, they do almost kill her. She touches the guitar and then she almost dies. So, yeah, mm. yeah, but yeah, but that's not my point. Like, like a good majority of the movie has this very sad kind of like somewhat serious tone. And so when you have like more goofier moments out of nowhere, I feel like it, it feels somewhat unearned or out of place. I feel like the film played into it being a little bit more self not to the like Marvel extent, but just have like a little bit more self-awareness and not be so kind of pretentious feeling. <laughs> <I> self-awareness feel like <laughs> looks at the screen. Uh-oh, is that Freddy Fazbear? Uh -oh. I think Freddy's behind me. <laughs> think, uh, yeah. uh, guys, guys, don't tell me. He I think, <laughs> guys, I think Chica, I think she's behind me, isn't she? <laughs> the fucking Marvel dialogue. But um, I, I feel like the film just had a little bit more of kind of like uh, a, a little bit more. Not no, again, just a tad bit more. A scene like that wouldn't have been nearly as out of place. Wait, so um, do you want more humor or more seriousness? I, I would like for more humor, personally. I think what oh. Grant is saying, if they're going to have all these comedy scenes in it, at least make it like consistent throughout the movie and not feel yeah. so like jarring when it happens, yeah. which I, I can I can see that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It feels yeah, like they, they had like five different ways they could have taken this movie and they try to like do all of them where he's randomly like, OK, no, I, I want you to be friends with the animatronics to see if like they mentioned my my brother's kidnapper anywhere. And it's like you want your sister to do that. But then never nothing really comes from it because they kind of just get the plot gets taken over at that point by William Afton and it, it's just feels like they don't really like have the time to commit to any like idea. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. What do we think about I'm the Matt Pat cameo? Well, that's no fun. You do realize that lunch is the most important meal of the day. Oh my God. When that fucking happened, <laughs> I, I was with, uh, I was with, I was with my fellow friend Fushia butter on youtube.com in the theater and and I it, it was uh, it was me and the, and the whole group of people. I was sitting on my on the chair. I didn't quite know what was happening yet, so I saw like oh restaurant scene. Okay, uh, I I heard the voice, but I didn't quite recognize the voice yet. I saw fucking Mad Pat's face. My palms of my hands go into my face. I'm like oh my fucking god. It was so fucking like funny. 
I mean, it's it's cute, but it's like it's like it, it was it was also like it kind of pulled me out of the movie. That's fair. That's why I was glad Markiplier wasn't in it because he was originally yeah. supposed to be the night guard at the start of the movie. And yeah, I was like, that would have immediately like I would have out the door been like, nope, I'm checked out. I feel like he should have been. Markiplier. I don't. Th- I think the Matt Pat thing was a great cameo, actually. The only part that was a little far was like the theory line. I was like, okay, bud, okay. It's just a theory. Are you being paid by the word? Dream theory. The whole book, dream theory. I mean, I, I kind of, uh, I mean, I, I didn't mind the MatPad cameo too much, but at the same time, I'm like, is this whole scene just to set up MatPad? Yeah, yeah, I had that same thought where it's like, oh, this scene only exists in a diner, so you can have Matt Pat like show up. Yeah, and the same thing with the taxi with Corey Kenshin, where it's like, okay, you needed to throw him in somewhere, so you're just like, oh, what if Freddie took the taxi to get there? You know. Mm-hmm. Um, how insane would it be if Matt Pat was William Afton? That would have been crazy. He could. That would have been it. crazy, but also would have been really like it would not have worked, <laughs> but it would have been really funny. Dude, Matt Pat's got crazy eyes. He could have sold it. He has crazy eyes. Yeah, he pulls it off. He's like, I have a theory. And it's like, oh my God. I'm going to be honest <laughs> with the ending twist with like when William Afton pulls out that he's in the bunny suit and starts like smiling. He's like, I was the one controlling all of them at the same time. Look at you. Look at the nasty things that you have become. Is, is that like part of the lore? Because I started like fucking crying laughing during that part. Okay. Yeah, this is where I got to like FNAF lore drop on you. So yeah. a lot of this movie was uh, taking uh, inspiration from the first Five Nights at Freddy's book, which is a novel adaptation of the first game, but takes a lot of liberties and adds different characters. And so the whole plot of that uh, book is that um, a group of kids whose friend got kidnapped at Freddy Fazbear's as a kid, uh, they sneak into an abandoned mall that was built on top of Freddy Fazbear's and they kind of go through the mall and go underground to the old Freddy's place where they meet a security guard who is the security guard for the mall to make sure no one's like sneaking in. And, and then it's revealed by the end of the movie that he was William Afton who was like took on the security job at the mall so he could monitor to make sure no one's going into Freddy's to like see the dead bodies that, that he left there. Um, and so that's kind of his purpose, um, I think, in... Like, they tried to take that in this movie where it's like, oh, I'm getting a security guard to monitor Freddy's so no one sneaks in, like, breaks in and, um, like, finds the dead kids inside the suits. But that's not really... He just kind of shows up at the end, you know? Mm. So was he, was he just killing people for, like, 10 years or something? No, see, this thing, too, what? is that this movie doesn't explain any motivation in the book. William Afton is experimenting with, like, souls and, like um, like, memories, and he's stealing this like substance from the kids called remnant uh and he's putting it inside his animatronics to try figure out like immortal life that's too like adrenochrome mass hollywood isn't gonna touch that they're like no yeah they're they're not gonna do any of that um so yeah it's him trying to figure out how to be immortal and that's why he goes inside the spring trap suit where it's like he's kind of like he he loves being spring trap in the books because he's like i'm immortal no one can kill me but this movie kind of why why did you choose choose animatronics for that because they're robots? I, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> something about like the metal in the robots mixing with the remnant. It's like a conductor or something like that. I don't fucking know. So it is explained. <laughs> it's, just, it's just like exposition, exposition, exposition. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Metal Gear Solid Syndrome. All right. The William Afton like plot, I didn't find that terrible. And like the lore behind it, I didn't find it that bad. But like the action scene where like he shoves him and he's holding the knife and he very clearly could stab him, but then just like pushes yeah, him and punches he him and he yeah. does and then he dances around and he's like haha i'm about to here's i'm just about to kill him <laughs> and then he does it and it's like it- wow farewell my gushman that's enough i feel like it would have made more sense if william afton was dead and was possessing an animatronic and leading all of them that would have like like leaning to the paranormal stuff, but seeing the, just a guy in a costume being behind it all and choosing a pizzeria to do it, I don't know. I just it, I had trouble taking it seriously because the film wanted me to take it seriously. I had trouble Let's taking see, I, Five Nights at Freddy's <laughs> seriously. I know, I know that's how it sounds, but you know what I mean. Like I thought I mean, it was weird yeah. that like they were so adverse to going into like the supernatural, the super supernatural direction, but yeah. they still had the thing, the whole resolution be oh, the pictures on the walls. We just need to draw a picture of <laughs> yeah. the bunny killing the kids so they remember that like, he he did that and it works. So goofy. 
So I yeah. feel like they were kind of scared and in, in a bad way. They were what? kind of scared to go scared into of, like why they ghosts scared? into spirits because it's like too deep for mainstream audiences. Or at least that's like yeah. a worry. I don't I don't think so. Ghosts are not like ghosts are pretty normal, like pretty mainstream. Like, but it's a generic ghost, way. but when you go into like souls in different bodies and you do that, it does of kind kids, of like especially. And yeah. not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it becomes like complicated. I don't yeah, know, I it feels like, like they wanted to do the FNAF lore, but kind of simplify it for a general audience, which to me is like, I get it, but at the same time, I'm like, fuck, I wanted to see like an adaptation of this on the big screen that doesn't feel like it has to cater towards a, a fucking Joe Schmo across the street, you know, like. I, I feel like I feel like spirits and possession would have been a pretty easy way of explaining why the characters are the way they are. And it would have not been, again, it's a horror work, so I feel like it wouldn't, it, people would have. I mean, they gave it a pretty simple enough, explanation. But... The explanation is the kids died and he did some weird experiment yeah. to like trap them or manipulate them into doing his bidding. And once they found out the truth from like a child's perspective telling it to them, then they were free and they turned on him, which I thought that was a pretty lame ending. <laughs> I thought that was pretty shit. Yeah. This Freddy Fazbear staring at William Afton as he dies. Damn, Freddy. He's a murderer. I just thought it was lame that the cupcake was the one who like did any damage. The cupcake's the one that like triggers the spring locks. Who was the cupcake supposed to be either way? What kid no, was that? Was I don't think anyone. Was that just Chica's fans, extension? <laughs> fans theorize that the girl inside Chica, I think, had a dog, and so the dog. I was about to say like a dog. Also died. That makes yeah. sense. But that wasn't shown at all in the movie. But that's at least in the games. I think that's what's implied. <laughs> Damn, uh, one thing I damn. thought was funny was at the very end, uh, the aunt's dead. Like, the Freddy yeah, kills yeah, the aunt, no one and cares. no one just cares. They don't acknowledge it, mm -hmm. and she's, like, literally murdered gone. Silly, Jane. She fell asleep. And I guess they're happy. <laughs> you know, that's not hard or traumatic, or no one talked about it at all. She's just yeah. completely dead. Yeah, it feels, it feels like a lot of the... It feels like a lot of the external like character stuff with uh, the main character. It feels like a lot of that is kind of like in the background or kind of brushed off, which on the one hand, I get why, because you want to focus on FNAF. But at the same time, you spent you spent the first like 30 minutes of the movie setting it up. So there, so to brush it off kind of just makes the whole thing like. Well, why'd you bother even bother setting it up then? Why didn't you like shorten a lot? I of will the say stuff it wasn't a big simpler? setup because it was just the Freddy in real life scene when they kill her. It was just like a quick like joke, really. But the fact that like they didn't acknowledge it, I felt like they should have at least some. Maybe they should have been standing by a cemetery at the end, like happy. That's what I feel and like nothing really something. has any consequence. Where yeah, she just dies. Yeah. It, the, the last scene is them sitting in their house, like eating cereal, talking about like going to Freddy's again. It's like, is your aunt like still dead in the corner of the room? Like, what's going on? We're going back to Freddy's to see the the creepy ghost animatronics. Let's go. Also, yeah, they fucking find out that um the <laughs> what what happened and that the kids' dead bodies are being hidden inside the suit. If I was Mike. I would go to the fucking police and be like, find yeah. these parents. Their kids are here. Their missing bodies are here. You know, here's some closure. Yeah. You can put them to rest. Also, arrest Vanessa. She's been in on this for fucking like 15 years. She's an well, adult. Well, if they didn't, they wouldn't be able to set up FNAF 2 that's coming out. Yeah. And Vanessa's yeah. the goat. Let's be real. Yeah, they couldn't do anything bad to her. So, Vanessa was from Security Breach, right? Yes, which is weird to me that they brought her all the way back yeah. into FNAF 1. But that was that was the fine. weird part for me because, again, like I'm not super big on FNAF lore, but I'm acutely aware of it. So I know Vanessa. I know her as the white woman from Security Breach who was in the white woman jump scare. Yeah. Uh, and I Googled her after the movie. Um, I'm like, is that the girl from Security Breach? And it's like, oh, yeah, she is. And I saw, oh, her name is Vanessa A. So I guess it's implied she's... William Afton's daughter in the games or something. Is that like, is that the case, Mark, or or what? Not in the games. In the games, okay, this is a whole different thing. In the <laughs> games, uh, Vanessa is like an employee at, I think, a VR company, and they're making Five Nights at Freddy's VR in-universe. And yeah. so Vanessa gets corrupted by... Why is, her last, why is her last name A? Is she related to William Afton not, in the games? I don't think she is in the games. In the games, she is corrupted by a, a VR virus version of William Afton that makes her like a murderer. It, she's like a human, though. How can she be corrupted mm -hmm. by a virus if she's a human? Because she was testing the VR game and got 
like too immersed. I she guess. got like brainwashed. <laughs> yeah, brainwashed. She got, bra- yeah. she got brainwashed by a virus in the VR game. Yes. It makes sense, I promise. I have a question about the lore that I think only you can answer, Mark. But when he goes to sleep in dreams, he keeps getting, like, attacked. And then he wakes up attacked. But he's not, like, actually, like, dragged away by them, right? Is he actually being Hmm. attacked? (laughs) They would just kill him, See, that's not in the game either. My interpretation of that was... See, I had a more direct thing where I was like, oh, I guess the animatronics are, like, coming into the room and, like, swiping at him. But then that wouldn't really make sense because they'd obviously just pick him up and put him into the scooper machine. So, yeah, I don't know. But one of the times he wakes up and he is in the scoop machine, so maybe they are just doing that, but they're just... The first early times, they're just, like, giving him warning slashes. Yeah, I don't I don't get that because they only really turn on him at the end because they don't give or, or he doesn't give them uh, his sister, Abby. And it's like, so why were you fucking like hitting him before, like and swiping at him? And why were they killing the security guard at the start of the movie? Like, what did he do? Um, he found out. It's a lot of he weird stuff much. that isn't explained. Yeah. Yeah, he knew too much. That was the whole thing. Vanessa is supposed to like monitor and make sure the security guard doesn't figure out enough. But why does she suddenly like put her foot down when it comes to Mike? Uh, over all the other security guards who have died. He's the first one to have a sister. <laughs> He's the first one to not be a big fat guy. Balding. I do feel like I will forgive a lot of the movie's lack of scenery. I've actually kind of... One thing I did like is like uh, a lot of the visual stuff. Again, like I think I'm the most negative about the movie out of all of us. But one thing I did like was a lot of the visuals. Um I really like how Blumhouse uh, makes movies uh, makes movies look. Uh, they they make movies look professional while also making them super super cheap, which I'm actually all for. Um, I think movies should probably like not be three hundred million dollar bombs. Yeah. yeah, this movie I, has a box office budget of twenty million dollars. Yeah, pretty, which is pretty like, insane. That's dirt fucking cheap, and the movie looked really good too. I really enjoyed. I feel like it could have been better cinematography wise, but I, I overall liked it visually. I like uh, the cinematography. The only parts that were weird were yeah. a couple of the outdoor scenes where like the camera was moving in a weird way or something. Yeah, yeah, but which is obviously probably intentional. Even yeah. though they could have done better with it, I do I do like how the movie looked overall. The the film had a very nice it wasn't like blue color graded to hell, but it still retained like a like a dirty kind of look to it. I really enjoyed the the uh, animatronics and how they moved. They use uh, puppets to move them, and they were they looked really good, really really good. Um, yeah, they're great. I, I feel like visually the film was was great, very 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 good. Not perfect, but uh, I was very positive about about the visuals. Um, I wish the rest of the film was up to snuff, but I do hope whoever worked on the film, like like the cinematographer. And the puppet designers, I hope they go on to bigger things. Wow, how brave and noble of I me. know. How brave and noble of me. How brave. I hope your resume gets a nice uh, nice uh, fill-in. I hope One you get, thing that uh, I thought was funny is Josh Hutcherson stars in this movie, who when we were doing our, our previous group, I always said Josh Hutcherson looks like the Chad version of Mark, and he stars in the FNAF movie. What do we think of Josh Hutcherson? Infinite. Dude, I think they should have got me to play young Josh Hutcherson in the flashbacks. Dude, the second movie is apparently like focusing on the back more. Maybe you can, or in his past, I don't know why I said back. But you can be young Josh. You can audition. You might even get Scott it. Scott Cawthon, I'll make a positive review if you uh, let me be in the movie. <laughs> if this you ever do like going. a meeting halfway with him, like just casually mention like, I kind of look like I'd be like a young, <laughs> young Josh Hutcherson, right? Like, yeah, I've tried. That guy is elusive because uh, I'm friends with Kellen, who voices Freddy, and I'm like, Kellen, please, please, yeah. can we get Scott Cawthon on the podcast. He's like, no, not in a million years would he ever agree. Yeah, I think Scott Cawthon has done one interview publicly, and that's if you it. speak to him the privately, past, like, maybe you can drop it. Be like, dude, yeah, I totally be- look like him. You could ask. You could just ask Kellen. Yo, Kellen, can you? Put in a good word, yeah. Kellen yeah, was in the movie, good. by the way. Kellen uh, voiced uh, Foxy. He was the one doing like the little dum 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 dum, like when Foxy's. I didn't know that was hallway. him. Oh my god! Holy shit! I didn't know yeah. that was him. I should. Yeah, I should have. Cool. I should have pointed the screen and went, "Oh my god, that's Kellen!" I went to. 
Oh my god, I, I know that guy. I know him. I went to Disneyland with him. Oh, Disneyland. Did, did I tell you? This is kind of off topic, but but did he tell you about the fucking convention story? <laughs> no, I think you did, though. All right, so I, so um, I live in fucking Ohio, and Kellen was you at a, so a convention. You swear too much, Grant. You swear too much. You gotta, you gotta chill it. YouTube's not going like it. This is a podcast. kid's podcast. This is a kid's podcast? Oh my god. Yeah, you I say fucking every bad. five minutes. Or every I five do? seconds. I don't even notice anymore. Because the devil's but, consumed your mouth. <laughs> FNAF has consumed my mouth, bro. That's what happened. Freddy Fazbear, the the, the kids, they possessed my... Freddy my Fazbear smiles words. while God frowns. But I was at a... I was at a convention in Cleveland with my friends, and uh, Kellen was there as one of the guests. And so I, the a couple nights before, I went, you know what would be, what would be funny? If I, like, sent a hi to him while I was there, waited in line for him... Adam signed something. So I picked up my copy of Despicable Me for the PS2. And I, I went into uh I went into a line full of like FNAF and My Hero fans. So I'm just standing there in line. And uh, eventually I, I get to the end of the line and I see I see um there the, the people in front of me wanted a picture with him. And so the girl behind me went, here, take the camera, uh, take a picture of him. And so I take the picture. Kellen didn't know. Who I was at first, they saw me holding the cameras. Like, oh my god, it's you! So <laughs> I walked up to him. I'm like, "Yo, what up, man?" I gave him a hug, and and I'm like, "Here, sign this." He's like, "All right, I'll tell Mark and Veronica that I saw you." <laughs> I think he did actually tell me about that. Now that you mention it, yeah, yeah, that was really funny when I saw him at the fucking. I for, what, what is it? I forgot what the convention is called, but uh, Ohio we, uh, Con. <laughs> it was on Ohio Con. No, it's it's called like NextCon or something. No, it, it was Ohio Con. World. Down in Ohio. Sure it was Ohio Con. Yeah, it was Ohio Con, dude. No, Stop it was it was it us. was not called Ohio. Ohio Con, something else. He might have been to both, and the I was it was the <laughs> NextCon one. He was yeah, at. He, he was definitely at Ohio Con. Yeah, and it yeah, might be like he might have been at like both. I know he was really tired when I saw him. So mm -hmm. yeah, he's probably too busy from Ohio Con the night before. <laughs> he probably was just mixing up the Ohio conventions. So no, like, dude, it was yeah, Ohio probably. Con. Stop trying to press us on it. We know it was Ohio Con, dude. <laughs> Damn, you really wanted to be Ohio Con, don't you? You really want to believe that, uh huh? You really mm -hmm. want to believe that, like William Afton wasn't the killer? You think he wouldn't do that? Hmm. Mm -hmm. We we all had bets of. <laughs> the Living Tombstone being the credit song, we were like, come on, they have to, they have to. And then we were like, yeah, we are literally the movie was ending. I was like, it's going to happen. Let's see it. And then <laughs> I heard the it happened. The yeah, jingle, I, I, and I was, was like, like let's yeah. go. <laughs> I thought they were going to like save that for like the end of the credits, you know, when they're fucking like getting to the end of it and everyone's already left the theater. I was not expecting it to be the, the, the first song. Um, <laughs> good for them. I it guess. was exactly what I but, expected. Uh, I was like, if they didn't do that, literally riots would happen. Yeah. yeah, there were riots anyway. Did you see the video of the guys like fucking yeah. beating each other up in the movie theater? Mm. No, <laughs> but how, I would love that. that was I got sweet. I gotta ask on that level, Mark and Jaden. How are your guys's theater experiences? It was pretty good overall compared to the stuff I've seen on like TikTok where people are like throwing popcorn everywhere and like yeah, screaming same. and like over the movie where everyone was just kind of like along for the ride and laughing at how demo it was, you know? Yeah. Like uh, <laughs> the only time anyone really like screamed was when MatPat showed up and it was my friend, Sonny, just stood up and started clapping yeah. and screaming. That, that's only something, so that's totally something Sonny would absolutely do. That's <laughs> Sonny definitely Sonny. the same thing. Uh, he did the same thing in the Sonic movie whenever the little girl gave Sonic his shoes. He stood up and started clapping and screaming Fucking in the theater. Fucking stupid. How was your theater experience, Jaden? Uh, I didn't... Yeah, mine was... There isn't a lot of people because I saw it the second day. And um, mm. people gasped at the MatPat thing. <laughs> but that's about it. Mm. No one talked. That's the only time people made, like, any noise was the MatPat scene. People were like... <gasps> they were like, oh my god, it's the guy! It's the guy! <laughs> I caught it super late on a Thursday night, so I, I feel like there weren't a whole lot of people. The only thing that that was uh, a, a thing, like in the theater, was like when when the kid reached out his hand and grabbed the aunt and it bit her in half. There was some guy that went, "Was that the bite of '87?" Like very loudly no. in the theater, and everyone laughed, which it was very funny. But that was about <laughs> it. There was a lot of like kids and teens, but they were all accompanied by like their moms or dads in my theater. So like. Uh, their, yeah, they would, make, they would make references. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've heard people like have like really bad theater experiences, and uh, I, I tweeted out like, 
I made a tweet saying, oh, holy shit, the FNAF movie was bad. And one guy responded, oh, are you sure it was bad or did you have a bad theater experience? And I'm like, no, my theater was actually pretty good. <laughs> my theater was pretty good, actually. Okay, uh, tell me about this, Grant. Yeah. I, uh, I I saw you tweeting that, and then I saw you tweeting like the next day, being like, "Oh my god, the FNAF fans are after me." What? Yeah, what happened there? What were the What were their excuses for the movie? I think it was like I think it was like just a couple people. I, I, I honestly kind of tend to over exaggerate on Twitter. Twitter is like wrestling; it's not real. You know what I mean? It's not real. Mm -hmm. A lot of it was more so people going first L Dumbsville take or L take or whatever or bad take or. What'd you expect from the FNAF movies? Kind of like basic excuses. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what else to say other than like, I just didn't like the movie that much. I think we're at the, the time, the point in the show where we should do our rating, have the chart set Hell up. Yeah. So what start would you, you yeah, start with you, Grant. What would you give it out of 10? What? Oh, I thought it was out of 100. Or I guess it's just oh, out, it was of out of 100. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it was out, out of 100. 100. Come on. We got to be consistent. I forgot, we like a whole, like, to be honest. We do a whole graphic where it's, it's like. It's been so an long since thing. we record that. And that's going to be the second episode. People don't even. And my, and my camera is completely sideways. I didn't even realize until editing. My camera on that, that video is like my the side of my profile. Well you, so. well, you are the one editing it, so you'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah, but um, I would overall give the movie a 2 out of 10. Damn. Like 20, so out like of 20 out of 100? Yeah, 20 out of 100. Yeah, baby. I thought I was harsh. I, it's a fan, I would give it like a 70 out of 100, but as like a normal movie, I would give it a 50. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go for like a 55, I'll say, out of 100. And I'm going to give it a 75. I'm the most optimistic. They only had a few parts that I didn't like. Overall, I was pretty entertained. How long is it? I don't think it's a very long movie. Hour and a half. Yeah, very short. Hour and fifty, actually. Love. Pretty it's sure. an, it is an hour, hour and fifty. 50. Yeah, it's an hour. What 50. the yeah. fuck? But yeah, an hour and fifty. Felt like it went by so quickly. It did feel slightly too long. I would just remove like the from the director's cut. We just cut out the scene where IRL Freddy goes into the real world to grab Abby and goes in the funny remove taxi. Remove all the boring exposition scenes. Jesus Christ! I think the exposition was decently necessary, to be honest. As someone who doesn't know FNAF, the only exposition was like. He was like, I am the guy, William Afton, the whole time. It's like, I, I knew that. I can All I that wanted out. from it was like at least one shot or like in the middle of the movie that established the yellow bunny was kind of like keeping it. Like maybe he's like sleeping and he like wakes up and he looks at the camera and he thinks he sees like a yellow rabbit in the corner. And he's like, oh, what the fuck? Like I'm going crazy here. And then that sets up William for like coming in later on. I just, that's the only, if they add it's more William Afton kind of stuff throughout the whole thing instead of just leaving it until the very last five mm -hmm. minutes, I think I would have come out of it feeling a lot better than I did. But uh, so what? what's our average? What's the So I score? giving it a 75. So I'm trying to figure out what the average is right now. It's a 50. It's a solid. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm fine with it. We sure. gave it a 50 out of 100. Decent score. Yeah. Average. And why don't you wrap us up, Mark? Why don't you do the outro? Yeah, Mark, you do the outro since you're the FNAF guy, huh? Ugh. That's true. Since this is our first episode, guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, this introduction to Film Sheet, our new podcast, where we're going to be discussing a movie every week, if we can keep it that way, and there are enough movies to accommodate for. Get ready for episode two, which is about Spy Kids, which should be coming out next week. And then after that, we're doing fresh ones. All right. <laughs> I think it's over. Uh, uh, That's it. It's I've over. Been Mark. <laughs> there's G and there's Demzil. Bye. Bye.